Is generative AI for video ready for prime time production? We look at experiments combining AI tools with traditional and virtual production techniques to create cinematic scenes. Is generative AI for video ready for prime time production? Our AI dope team take a deep dive look at the use of generative AI tools in video production, discussing their potential, limitations, and real world applications. We look at experiments combining AI tools with traditional and virtual production techniques to create cinematic scenes. So today is all about generative AI for video production. It's a hot topic right now, with tools like Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and ChatGPT making waves in the industry. But the question is, are they really as disruptive as they seem? That's right. The author of the article decided to put these AI tools to the test in a real-world environment. They gathered a group of technical friends and created a project that combined traditional and virtual production techniques with cutting-edge AI tools. The goal of their project was to push the boundaries of these tools and see if they could deliver viable results, all while working within a limited budget. And let me tell you, they were in for some interesting findings. Before we get into the nitty gritty of their project, let's quickly go over some key AI terms that are important to understand. The first one is artificial intelligence itself, which has been around since 1950. It started with computers that could play checkers and solve math problems. Exactly. And over time, AI development progressed with advancements in robotics and AI analysis tools. In the early 2000s, machine learning and neural networks came into the picture, laying the foundation for what we now call generative AI. Generative AI is all about models that can generate text, images, or other media in response to natural language prompts. These models learn patterns from training data and then generate new data with similar characteristics. In similar terms, they imitate human reasoning based on examples created by humans. Now that we know what generative AI is, let's move on to some filmmaking specific terms that filmmakers should be familiar with. First up, we have algorithms, which are sets of instructions that tell computers how to solve problems or make decisions. And then there's computer vision, which is an AI that can interpret and understand images or videos. It's the technology behind face recognition and object detection. Deep learning is another important term. It's an AI technique that learns from large amounts of data and makes decisions without being explicitly programmed. It's what allows generative AI models to generate new content. And speaking of generative AI, we have generative adversarial networks, or GANs. They're like an art contest between a creator and a judge. The creator makes art and the judge decides if it's real or fake, improving both parts over time. That's right, Avery. And the creator in this case is called the generator, which is an AI that can create realistic images or generate new artwork inspired by famous artists. Another interesting term is inpainting, which is the process of retouching or replacing parts of a generated image. It's like giving a finishing touch to the artwork. And let's not forget about large language models or LLMs. These are algorithms that use deep learning techniques and massive data sets to understand, summarize, generate, and predict new content. Machine learning is also crucial here. It's a method for computers to learn from data and make decisions without being explicitly programmed. It's the backbone of generative AI. And lastly, we have natural language processing, which helps computers understand, interpret, and generate human languages. It's what enables chatbots to answer questions or convert spoken words into text. Now that we've covered these key terms, let's get back to the project the author conducted. They wanted to see how far they could push these AI tools on a limited budget, and what they found was truly fascinating. They combined traditional and virtual production techniques with generative AI tools, and the results were impressive. They were able to generate new forms of media, thanks to the capabilities of these AI tools. One specific technique they used was outpainting, which extends a generated image beyond its original borders with a second generation. It's like expanding the canvas of artwork. And through their project, they were able to test the capabilities of these AI tools and see how they could potentially revolutionize the filmmaking industry. It's an exciting time for filmmakers who have access to these tools. Absolutely, but as with any new technology, there are always limitations and challenges there's still a lot to learn and explore when it comes to generative AI for video production. 
That's very true, but it's clear that these tools have immense potential and can significantly impact the way we create and produce videos. Next up, we're looking into the concept of prompt engineering and AI filmmaking tools. Prompt engineering is all about carefully crafting or choosing the input or prompt you give to a machine learning model to get the best possible output. By manipulating the prompt, you can influence the outcome of the AI-generated content. That's right. And one interesting tool mentioned in the article is Midjourney, a well-known image generator. It uses prompts to create highly detailed and evocative imagery. Similarly, Stable Diffusion is another tool that operates in a similar way to Midjourney. Absolutely. And when it comes to creating moving images, text-to-video generators build on the concept of text-to-image by expanding their capabilities to produce videos. Some tools even include video-to-video -video generators, which allow you to transform existing video clips based on the style reference. That's a great point. For example, with these tools, you could take footage of someone walking down a street and add a reference to a different city. The tool will then attempt to make the video look like the style reference. It's a powerful way to manipulate and transform video content. Definitely. And speaking of AI filmmaking tools, Adobe Firefly is worth mentioning. It's Adobe's take on AI, and it integrates well with Photoshop. It features a familiar professional interface compared to some other AI tools available. Right. And another interesting tool called Kubrick combines several different AI tools to generate 2.5D environments for use as backgrounds on LED volumes. This tool can be particularly useful in creating immersive visual effects for films. Absolutely. Now let's move on to discuss some additional AI tools mentioned in the article. Neural Radiance Fields, NRFs, are a subset of AI used to create three-dimensional models of objects and locations based on various images. Tools like Luma.a-i and NVIDIA Instant NRF simplify the capture and processing of NRFs, resulting in highly realistic and accurate three-dimensional models and locations. That's fascinating. And when it comes to AI motion capture and visual effects, Wonder Studio is a platform that takes source footage of a person, rotoscopes them out of the footage, and replaces them with a CG character that matches their movements. It does all this without the need for tracking markers or manual intervention. Exactly. And another tool called Move.a-i derives accurate motion capture from multiple cameras without requiring expensive motion capture hardware or tracking markers. It's a great way to streamline the motion capture process in filmmaking. Now that we've discussed the various AI filmmaking tools, let's shift our focus to the author's real-world project and their team. The author mentions having a group of filmmaker friends who were excited to test out these AI tools together. Their plan was to have two colleagues join them for a three-day test project. They would shoot live action footage using different cameras and techniques, and then process the footage with various AI tools to see if they could create high-end results with minimal resources. Absolutely. One of their team members, who is a writer-director-editor, offered a few pages from an existing script as the basis for their shoot. The segment they chose involved a rescue worker trying to retrieve secret antiquities from Notre Dame during the 2019 fire, an ambitious undertaking indeed. That's right. During their project, they experimented with different techniques to capture live action footage and see how well it translated into AI material. They used virtual production with an LED wall, a green screen, and live action captured a location. They explored different setups, including an LED wall with a fixed camera, an LED wall with a moving camera, a green screen setup, and on-location shoots. They also tried using text prompts and a hybrid approach combining AI tools. In their first experiment, the author used an LED wall with a fixed camera to shoot a sequence, where the protagonist is rushing to Notre Dame on a motorcycle. The AI tool, Runway, successfully transformed the footage by transposing the actor's helmet into a high-tech motorcycle helmet and changing the background to intense fire-filled city scenes. That's right. The results of this experiment were quite impressive. However, in their second experiment, where they used an LED wall with a moving camera, the AI tool couldn't produce the desired results. The complex camera movement and shifts in the actor's face seemed to throw off the AI. This highlights one of the limitations of using AI-generated video to video tools. They work best with simple camera movements and less variation in the actor's appearance. When faced with more complex camera movements and changes in facial features, the AI struggles to generate accurate and consistent results. 
Absolutely. The third experiment involved using a green screen setup. While the AI tool was able to transform the actor's appearance to some extent, it struggled to detect the motion of the composited background plate. As a result, the final composition looked like a person sitting in the middle of a field with moving objects around them. Despite these limitations, the author decided to explore shooting scenes in real-life locations without any composited or projected backgrounds. In their fourth experiment, they shot a scene where the main character rises out of the Sain River and approaches the burning cathedral. They used reference images of the original blaze to feed into the AI tool, Haber. The results of this experiment were a mix of trippy images and promising results. Both Runway and Kaber did a fine job creating the background and styling it. However, they struggled to maintain consistency in the appearance of the actor throughout the shot. That's true. In their fifth experiment, the authors tried more complex shots with wider angles and camera movements. They fed these shots into both Kaber and Runway and encountered similar limitations. While portions of the results were interesting and aligned with their vision, both the background and the actor would mutate and transform unpredictably. This led them to their sixth experiment, where they tried using text prompts instead of reference images. They used the text to video generator tool and runway to create scenes based on text descriptions. While this consistently produced interesting results, it lacked consistency in terms of output style and sometimes resulted in odd deformations of the human characters. The authors realized that using AI video to video tools alone might not be feasible for professional-level digital content creation. However, they found that a hybrid approach combining AI tools could yield better results. In their seventh experiment, they used Wonder Studio in combination with Runway or Kaber. Wonder Studio is an AI motion capture, rotoscoping, and compositing tool. With this hybrid approach, they were able to extract the actor from the original shot using Wonder Studio, generate a clean background plate using Runway or Kaber, and then composite the actor back into the scene using the mat from Wonder Studio. Although this approach was slower and more labor-intensive than pure video to video techniques, it delivered more consistent and controllable results. The AI-generated backgrounds matched well with the framing and camera movement, and the compositing was improved compared to previous experiments. However, the authors note that using a dedicated compositing application like After Effects or Nuke could potentially yield even better results. Overall, this hybrid approach combining AI tools showed the most promise and provided satisfying results for their shoot. It's important to acknowledge that while AI tools have the potential to revolutionize filmmaking, they are not yet perfect. They have their limitations and require careful consideration and experimentation to achieve desired results. The author's experiments serve as a valuable insight into the current capabilities and challenges of using AI in filmmaking. Absolutely. One of the main observations from the shoot was that the AI tools were predictably unpredictable. The results varied greatly, and it was difficult to determine why some were close to the desired effect while others were far off. This inconsistency made it challenging to bring the results into line in a consistent manner. That's right. The authors suggest that for these AI tools to be truly effective in a film production pipeline, they need intuitive UI controls with granular control over the outputs. Currently, the abstract controls of these tools lead to abstract imagery. While they may be easy to play with and create surreal visuals, they are not yet ready for professional projects of all types. However, the authors anticipate that these tools will evolve quickly. Another observation is that the AI tools perform best for medium close-ups taken from a selfie perspective. They struggled when it came to tracking an actor moving laterally throughout a shot or changing relative size, especially when combined with a free-moving camera. This limitation is something that needs improvement, as most movies involve a variety of shot sizes and camera movements. Absolutely. The authors hope that as more people use these tools and provide feedback, they will become better at processing various shot sizes and camera movements. This is an important aspect to consider because in order for AI tools to be widely adopted in the industry, they need to be able to handle the complexities of real-world filmmaking. After completing the shoot, the authors recorded a debriefing session where they discussed the results and their observations on the usefulness of these tools in real production pipelines. They also compared their opinions on where these tools could potentially evolve to be more useful. AI tools like Runway or Caber Generation could find their place in short-form content. While they may not be used for an entire movie, they could be valuable for creating backgrounds or matte paintings.
This could potentially impact jobs for matte painters or create new opportunities for them to work with these AI tools. Keith also makes an interesting comparison to the movie Waking Life, which used rotoscope animation over footage shot on prosumer video cameras. He sees a similarity in the look of AI renders and believes that these tools could eliminate the need for a large team of animators doing labor-intensive work. That's a great point. He also mentions the potential of AI technology advancing to a point where there might not be a need for a film crew or a sound stage. While this might seem far-fetched at the moment, it's an interesting concept to consider for the future of filmmaking. Kim, a writer-director-editor, also shared her perspective during the debriefing. She mentioned that she expected a greater level of control and interaction with the UI of these AI tools. As a filmmaker, she emphasized the importance of consistency and being able to navigate through different stages of storytelling. Kim also highlights the benefits of AI for actors, particularly in playing the aged or creature characters without heavy prosthetics. This offers new possibilities for performers and could potentially enhance their range and versatility in roles. Another point Kim makes is that these AI tools would be useful for anyone pitching a project to a studio or investors. The ability to visually create a professional-looking product that sells the idea without the need for a full crew is quite appealing. Absolutely. She also draws a parallel between the current state of AI tools and the transition from film editing to digital editing. It was a drastic change that happened quickly, and it never went back because it saved money. Similarly, she believes that as AI technology improves, it could reshape the filmmaking industry. One scenario is that AI tools continue to be integrated into various aspects of filmmaking, such as editing, visual effects, pre-visualization, and script research. This is a more realistic outcome because we're already seeing AI being used in these areas. Absolutely. She also draws a parallel between the current state of AI tools and the transition from film editing to digital editing. It was a drastic change that happened quickly, and it never went back because it saved money. Similarly, she believes that as AI technology improves, it could reshape the filmmaking industry. On the other hand, the article also mentions the possibility of a massive transformation in how films are made. This could disrupt everything from job roles to who controls the means of production. The author provides examples of past disruptions in the industry like sound, color, optical to digital compositing, film to digital transition, and virtual production. Yes, and it's important to note that not all AI tools will have a game-changing impact. Some technologies like three-dimensional have appeared and disappeared multiple times without sustaining mainstream success. The audience's appetite and willingness to pay for increased production costs and discomfort may limit the success of certain AI applications. That's true. However, the author also suggests that AI could land somewhere in the middle of these extremes. Some areas of cinematic production may be heavily impacted and transformed by AI, while others remain relatively unchanged. Another interesting point raised is the Gartner hype cycle. It suggests that generative AI is currently approaching or sitting at the peak of inflated expectations. This means that there's a lot of excitement and anticipation surrounding AI in filmmaking, but we may still need to wait for more practical applications and advancements. Absolutely. By emphasizing the importance of understanding and learning about the AI tools that affect your chosen field, AI could potentially be a catalyst for those who have always dreamed of a different career but were hesitant to make a change. That's a great point. The key is not to buy into the hype or fear surrounding AI. Instead, focus on learning how to leverage these tools to your advantage. And it's also crucial to consider the ethical and legal issues surrounding AI, such as copyright rules for works generated by AI and the use of training data without proper accreditation or compensation. Definitely. The article suggests that we're currently in the early stages of AI similar to the Napster phase where regulations and legal issues are still being sorted out. However, the industry is already moving towards a phase where AI content will be classified, licensed, and acknowledged based on its source and training data. In closing, the article encourages professionals to embrace new technologies like AI and see them as opportunities for progress rather than threats. It cites visionary artists like Walt Disney, George Lucas, and James Cameron, who have successfully incorporated new technologies into their work and thrived as a result. Absolutely. This is an inflection point, and as the saying goes, fortune favors the bold. As AI tools continue to evolve, 
it's important to keep an eye on their development and evaluate how they can enhance our own workflows. For even more great AI dope, click on this next video, here.